Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again, bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today, I am going to be doing a quick guide to the Tier 7 Standard Tech Tree Battleship in the German line, the Bismarck. Now this ship has a lot of story behind it. And I remember when this ship was first coming available, I was so looking forward to the Bismarck. How, and you want the Bismarck to be a really good brawling ship. Unfortunately, the Bismarck was not that when it first came out. There was a problem with the layered armor and the turtleback wasn't working properly. Now, Wargaming has gone ahead and attempted to do a fix on the Bismarck and the Bix Bismarck has improved. However, I would still like the Bismarck to be a really, really good, strong, brawling vessel, but it's not that. You have to be very careful when playing the Bismarck. It can take a lot of punishment, but it's not as tough as I want it to be. Anyways, now this quick guide is gonna look at the stats, and it's gonna look at the slots for your upgrades. It's also going to look at the commanders for this ship, as well as I will do a standard match with the Bismarck to show you the power of this ship and explain how things work while I'm doing that. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. So let's start with the stats first. Let's go to the stats. And first off, just so you know, that Bismarck sitting there with the beautiful Hunter Camel on there. I only have a few of those and I like saving them all for my Bismarck because it looks the best on the Bismarck. Okay, now this is a fully upgraded Bismarck. So we're going to look at all the mods we got here. Now let's start off with the upgrades. Now, being a Tier 7 ship, you're going to start off with four upgrades right off the bat. As always, they always start off with your standard aiming system, secondary battery, main battery. Now, this is one where people will choose pretty much any of these. Now, my Bismarck is not going to be a secondary build. I'm going to have... Well, maybe I will have it as a secondary build. I do have auto on here, so... But I, don't, I did not choose the secondary battery one here. I left that blank. Because I still wanted to have aiming systems. I still wanted that uh, minus 7 to my dispersion of the main battery. I still think that's so important. Now, I do get about a plus 5% increase to my secondary battery range as well as dispersion, but not that 20%. Now, a lot of people will choose this because a lot of people love playing a full secondary build for the Bismarck, getting those uh, secondaries up to 10, 11 kilometers. You're gonna to have to select your secondary battery here. And also, a lot of people will choose the main battery mod to give that better traverse speed, but taking a penalty on your reload time. But for me, I still like taking aiming systems. All right, our next slot here is going to be steering gear, damage control, and propulsion. As all you guys know, those who've been watching my quick guides, I always choose propulsion mod since i do a lot of stop and go i like having that 50 percent acceleration when i try to get moving so to me that's important that's just my play style all right now our third one we get our standard target acquisition we only could choose that one that's great to have now for a tier seven we get a fourth one and this one is once again you can choose secondary ma battery mod three this gives you another 20% battery reload time or the main battery mod. I chose this one. I wanted the additional main battery reload time on my ship of minus 12%, even though I'm taking a penalty to my traverse speed on my turrets. To me, that's fine. This works for me. All right. Now for your other ones, you have your three upgrade mods you get once you get your ship fully upgraded. Uh, I chose targeting systems uh, type 7 mod 2 first, giving me a 10% in increase to my range, which is awesome. Got a 17.3 kilometer range on this thing. And then I chose for my next upgrade, the Bismarck Hall B, giving me almost 70,000 hit points and a rudder shift time of 16 seconds. And the last one I chose was the engine, getting my maximum speed up to 31 knots, which is actually uh, quite good. The Bismarck really can slide to that water really nicely at 31 knots, which is really good. All right, so that's the stats there. Now, I should say the slot. Now, this is the stats themselves. We have almost 70,000 hit points. Our armor is at 360 millimeter. Torpedo damage reduction, 22%. That's not that great. 
but it's still okay. You take a 10,000 torpedo hit, you're still gonna reduce it by 2,200. So that's still not bad, it's better than nothing. Now artillery, now the Bismarck, she's got 380 millimeters, okay? That's four double turrets, so 380s. Firing range, 15.6 kilometers. Reload time of only 20 seconds. You gotta love the reload time. She has the reload time of the Sharn Horse, which is great. Uh, 180 degree turn time is 37 seconds. HE shells do 44, but your AP shells you'll be using more often is almost 12,000 in damage. Now these stats will uh, be skewed a bit because I have a high level commander on here right now. Maneuverability, 31 knots, 850 meter turn circle, rudder shift time of that 16 seconds. Concealment, like I always say, you're a big ship, you're gonna be spotted, so gotta deal with that. Overview. She's ironclad, above average armor thickness, greater resistance to all forms of armor penetration. Now that's that Bismarck's and German's unique turtleback armor for that. And it does actually work, okay? I just, like I mentioned before, to me, I like the Bismarck to be a true, true brawler, a really, really tough ship, but she's not quite there yet. I still like playing the ship, but it's not my go-to vessel for a brawler ship, which I really wished it would have been. Now, she's got secondary reach, which is great. She's got the longest secondaries at tier seven. You can get those things up to 11 kilometers, and it's like a fireworks display when they're going off. Superior AP damage, above average AP shell damage, which is really nice to have for this ship. All right, so that's the Bismarck there. Now, let's just go back here. Now, let's look at the commanders. As you can see at the moment, I have Otto on here, okay? Otto is my active commander at the moment. I'm going to be switching that because the commander I'm going to be putting on here is I'm going to be putting Hyde on here, okay? Now, let's look at Hyde first. If you have Hyde, Hyde is a great German battleship commander. He came at the Halloween event last year, and if we look at Hyde, um, for inspirations, and my go-to inspiration, number one for all battleships, is Cunningham just because of his precision love that skill and I think most people out there make use of Cunningham secondary I tend to use Robert a lot and this gives me better battleship AP shell penetration but you can use pretty much anyone out there for your second I highly highly recommend without question Cunningham for your first slot all right now the base trait of Hyde is nice he's got that um, increasing the ship hit points so I increase my ship hit points by 5.1%. So right now, my ship is now over 70,000 hit points because I switched the commanders. Now, skills. Um, I've got the brawling skill on here for high. Therefore, my uh, range of my battleship guns are going to go down because of it. But I got an increase of another 10% another on my reload. So it's probably down to around 19 seconds now. And that's a nice skill to have. You could also choose your flammable cannoneer. I don't like that skill because of the risk of catching fire, but if you want uh, better precision and better range, then this is the skill for you. I choose it on some of my ships. I make use of it sometimes, but I try to offset that skill by putting an inspiration or another skill on there to at least reduce that risk of catch catching fire. For my second slots, which are um, fully uh, fully upgraded, I like the um, Aladad, this one changes the ricochet angle of your battleship's AP shells. I've got a minimum ricochet angle on my battleships of plus eight degrees, which is really nice. And the guaranteed ricochet angle, ricochet angle of my battleship shells are at minus four degrees, so I have to be aware of that. So a bit of a penalty, but a great uh, bonus there. Now the third one, marksmanship, without question, minus seven dispersion. And at the uh, fourth skill level, um, I like Master Mechanic giving me, that, giving me the extra repair party, etc. for that. And he's a secondary um, legendary, so I chose Running with Scissors for this one. Better traverse time and uh, better rudder shift. But you can also, you'd be, just, you'd be doing just as fine with Farsight. It's up to you. But that's how I have Hyde set up. And I'm going to play um, Hyde on uh, this ship that I'm going to be taking out with the Bismarck. Now let's look at the other commanders you can choose. And I've, choose, I've used the other ones on this ship as well. And the other ones you have is auto. A lot of, now, a lot of you out there won't have hide, okay? Especially if you're a new player. But you're going to have auto. Auto is probably your go-to battleship commander if you don't have hide. Now, what's nice about auto is this. 
Otto, he's also the brawler as well. He's got the brawling skill, okay? However, um, he's also got Battleship's main gun AP shell damage. It's a wonderful skill to have. And now with Otto, I have Otto set up as he is my secondary commander for the German ships. I use Otto on the Nassau, that tier three uh, secondary, um, that tier three uh, battleship that has great secondaries. That's what I have Otto for. That's what he's set up for here. But you can make use of Otto on the Bismarck, especially if you want the Bismarck to be a secondary build. If you want the Bismarck to be a secondary build, use Otto and then make sure you select Hipper as an inspiration to give you even more increased battery range for your secondaries if you want to get them up there. And of course, you're going to select um, Auto Secondary here, okay, Porcupine. Now, let's uh, move on. The other battleship commander that you'll make use of, that you'll have, is Hipper, Franz von Hipper. Now, if we look at Hipper, Hipper has the, uh, the base trait of the range of secondary guns. So some people will use Hipper, if that's all they have, and put Hipper on the Bismarck. But if you want longer range secondary guns, you're going to want to put Auto on there and stick Hipper on as an inspiration to give you even greater range with your secondaries, okay? But Hipper is another great commander you can use on your Bismarck. So you can use Auto, you can use Hipper, and if you have Hide, you can make use of Hide. And we're going to use Hide for this match, all right? I don't think I have another battle. No, that's it for the battleship commanders. Okay, now... What we're going to do next is we are going to take this beautiful, like Germans make beautiful looking ships. So we're going to take this beautiful ship called the Bismarck out for a standard match. And we'll see how it performs with Hyde as the 15th level commander. All right. So please stick around for that. All right. Well, thank you for sticking around to watch the standard match of the Bismarck in action. I like the Bismarck. I think the Bismarck is a very good... Um, standard tech tree ship I, it's not the best but it's still a good above average ship to play at tier 7 from the standard tech tree now can the bismarck be better it definitely could be better should it be better yes it really should be better however we have what we have wargaming has, has attempted to fix it as best they could with the turtleback armor it is a lot better than what it used to be but I would really wish it could be a lot better than it is right now. I really want this ship to be a true brawler. Unfortunately, it's not, like I mentioned. Here we are. We're in a Tier 7 match. We're going to be up against a Vanguard, a Jean Bart, a Vladivostok, King George, a Nagato, a couple of cruisers, and a couple of destroyers. So this is going to be proving to be a, a, a pretty tough match for the Bismarck to going up against that, those type of ships. Okay, it does look good. I do love that hunter camel on this German ship. It's it's a beautiful looking camel. Just makes this ship look so good. All right, now we do have 31 knots of speed on this boat. Now we've got 69,200 hit points. That's pretty darn good. That's really nice to have for our tier seven. Now we do have like four planes. We'll never use all four planes, I highly doubt. Um, but we will probably use two or three of them for sure. And we've got four heels on here, which is nice. And we got those two lovely sonars on here. And that tends to be very helpful against destroyers. And now cruisers as well in their smoke clouds. Okay. Now we got AP loaded. We're primarily, if I'm not mistaken, I'm probably just going to use AP only. Now I recorded this match a little while ago. And you should realize that this match is pre-recorded. I played it, and now I'm doing audio over top of it explaining what happened. All right, so our first target there was the uh, Vanguard. Looks like the Vanguard collided with one of their uh, red ships. And we're going to take, take advantage of that because basically they're stationary in the water, and we can really hurt the Vanguard. The Vanguard's got a very squishy broadside. And we do, uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, we got two penetrations in there, so that's good. That's a pretty darn good hit. I'll take it. Now, we do have a problem with that uh, Kagero. That Kagero is going to be a real problem. I really hope our uh, destroyer can uh, deal with it. Now, there's the Vanguard again. The Vanguard's down to two-thirds. We took another shot at the Vanguard, and we got a couple more penetrations. So we're whittling away on the Vanguard. Now, what's nice here is I have uh, two destroyers in front of me. 
So that having a destroyer screen like that is really, really nice for the Bismarck. And I think that with the Bismarck, you really don't want to be caught alone with the Bismarck. Um, you really want to have, you want to keep allied vessels around you. I think that really helps with the increasing your survivability in this ship. Her sister ship, the Tirpitz, is a really, really good ship. And primarily because of those torpedoes the Tirpitz has. Unfortunately, the Bismarck doesn't have torpedoes. Okay, now we're taking a shot now. We've re we're going to rearrange. We've got to shoot the Nagato. The tier 6 ship. I'm, taking, I'm giving a thank you there for the individual giving me some smoke, which is good. I don't mind here because uh, what's good, you know, if I fire and smoke, the enemy team's going to see me because I'm a battleship. But um, we're going to take shots on the Nagato here. Nagato's giving us such a very lovely broadside, and Nagato's broadsides are really easy to sit it out, as you can see right there. And so we really hammered that Nagato pretty hard. Right, and he's gonna take torpedo hits here, and that's, those might end up. Nope, they didn't take him out. So we're gonna take the shot here, and we're gonna see if we get our sinking here. Nope, we didn't sink it. In fact, we got an overpen, and one of them bounced off the side armor of the Nagato. Oh, and then I realized there is an enemy destroyer sitting right there. And that's the one. I think it's a. From what I can see here, is it an Akasuki? I, I can't tell. Yeah, it's an Akasuki. So we're backing up. We're going to take the shot on the destroyer. We have, no, it's an Asasio. An Asasio. Oh my gosh. Hopefully, he already spammed his, uh, his torpedo reloader. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of torpedoes coming at me. Oh man. Okay. We're going to take shots on that. We have to try to get rid of it. That's, you have to respect destroyers when you're playing a uh, battleship. And you're going to have to target. Now, if I had HE loaded, then it would be a lot better. But uh, my APs are pretty much just putting big holes in it. And we still haven't sunk it yet. So we're going to retarget onto the Gatto again, since I can't see the Asatio anyways. Take some shots. Those shots are looking... Okay, we got a penetration. We just might sink that uh, Nagato yet. The sooner we get that deleted, the better. We're going to fire again here. See, the 19 second or 20 second reload on this ship is really, really nice. It's like having a tier 7 Sharn Horse with no torpedoes because, the, as you know, the Sharn Horse really does uh, reload so quickly. And so does this Bismarck. All right, we're going to take a shot on the York that's sitting way over there. Now, I think I may have had two, three sinkings with the Bismarck in this match, if I recall. So we haven't got anything yet. But we're doing a pretty much a bit of everything here. We've got Citadels, Fires, Incapacitations, Secondary Hits, Main Battery Hits. We have lots of allies around us, so we're screened up nicely here. Okay, here comes the torpedoes from the Assassio. We should be easily be able to dodge those since we were since that destroyer helped spot them for us because of the destroyer screen, which is really great. We have the uh, ship screens; so you can see this, you can see the fish in the water a lot quicker. Yeah, we're gonna be able to thread the needle here. Perfect. All right. Man, that Asasio smoke certainly does take a long time. It looks like he's staying in the smoke, did he? No, he didn't. He left the smoke. Okay. Now, there's that York again, sitting at the edge of the map. We're going to fire again on it, because we got the range. And I don't... doesn't look like... Is he going to turn into them? No. Nope, not at all. Okay. So really, the Bismarck at the moment really hasn't done too much in this match. We have lost uh, too many destroyers, even though we've done 44,000 in damage. That's pretty good. And now there's three ship, three red ships gone. So advantage to us, we have all our destroyers still, and they only have one destroyer left. So basically, I I always consider that we have the advantage there, especially if we have, if we have good destroyer players and. Pretty much anyone who's playing a destroyer at tier 7 is a good destroyer player. Alright, so that is the York that we're trying to target there. He's sitting way at the edge of the map. So basically the red team is pretty much on a run there. There's too much uh, blue power over here. 
Now that, we're going to take a shot on that Jean Bart. The Jean Bart's giving us a broadside. So the Jean Bart's pretty much more vulnerable when it's showing you a broadside. But my 380s, you know, they're not going to hit all that heavy against the Jean Bart, even if, even with it's a broadside, which is unfortunate. I was hoping that these uh, these guns would hit a lot harder than they do. Like, they are supposed to have superior AP penetration, but I don't feel like I get that with this ship. And I think a lot of other people feel the same way. I know you'll work so hard grinding through the German battleship line to finally get the Bismarck. And a lot of people are just not impressed with it. Like I said, it's an above average ship, but it's not a great ship. At least that's my opinion. Other people might have different opinions, that's fine. Okay, now we have the York. We're going to target here. If we could delete that York, that would be a real bonus. And we still have our two destroyers hunting over there. Now we are taking we are taking some good significant damage here. And our turtle back is holding back any citadels that are, that are being hit against us. But we are we are trying to keep this thing angled as best we can. That really does help here. Now that Jean Bart just keeps giving us a broadside. Like, oh my gosh. If I had a heavy-hitting battleship, man, that Jean Bart would be really getting toasted right now. All I could do with my Bismarck right now is whittle away at ships. Oh, he's giving me smoke again. That's nice. I'll give him a thank you. But I really don't need it because I'm going to fire. So, once I fire my guns, I'll be spotted. that come from? I came from over there. Okay. Now that one's really just the Nagato. It's really sitting with me. Now I could sink the Nagato by hitting the broadside with my 380s here. We should be able to get the penetration through and sink that. Now we got one penetration in so we'll, we'll fire the uh, rear turrets and see if we can be more successful. Yep, we were. We got the Citadel with it. And we got the sinking sink. That deletes the Nagato. Okay, that's our first sinking there. So I, the one thing I can recommend with the uh, the Bismarck when you're playing it is um, just be patient. Um, whether you're using HE or AP, it really doesn't matter. Um, the AP, the, the 380s on here do work well. They certainly are cruiser killers. And you are, really, you are going to hurt other battleships, Tier 7, battleships with your uh, guns you'll get your penetrations and you'll get your damage but you'll basically kind of like um, whittle away at the ships and every once in a while on a tier 7 you'll get that citadel but when you're facing off against tier 6 ships like that Nagata was yeah your 380s are really going to hurt those ships so you can really dominate tier 6 ships with your Bismarck but you are going to have a tough time with the uh, the tier 7 uh um, battleships. You'll have to just be aware of that. Be patient. Be angled. Don't show your broadside to a tier 7 battleship if you can help it. Okay? That's pretty much the best advice I can do because the tier 7 battleships like the, uh, the Jean Bart, you know, they can penetrate when you're bowing. So you have to be, be aware of that. And, well, the, the, the Iowa will just sink you eventually. Alright, so... We're going to take a shot on that York. We've been, we've been hammering that York all match. So hopefully we can... Uh, oh my gosh, that was just a bad shot there. I completely misjudged his turn, and I misjudged his speed. That happens when you have ships that. Oh, we have an HE fire over there. Who was firing that? That one, was that the Moss? I don't think it was the Moss. It was, uh, now we could take... Uh, wasn't it another, another Jean Bart? Oh my gosh, now we're down to four ships. So this is, this, <laughs> it went from our advantage to their advantage now. Now we're going to take a shot on that, uh, that Jean Bart and hopefully, see, we're whittling down. We're getting the penetrations. We are hurting it. And this destroyer keeps giving me some smoke, which is nice. 
But uh, because I'm firing my uh, main guns, it really doesn't help. Because when you fire in smoke with your main guns as a battleship, you're going to get spotted anyways. And we're going to keep the fire up on this uh, Jean Bart because if we could sink it, that's one less, less major vessel we have to worry about. And it looks like we're going to get it. Either myself or one of our allies will take out that Jean Bart. Now, since we have the fast reload, we should be able to hammer it here. Okay, this shot will sink it unless someone else gets it. And we got ourselves a Jean Bart. Okay, there's our second sinking. So now we've just evened it up. And I think the advantage goes to us. There's myself and two destroyers left against their three red ships with no destroyers. So, and I'm still in smoke, which is kind of nice. Now they can't even see me. <laughs> now there's the bonus with the smoke. Now, when I fire my guns, I am a screwed here. So I want to wait until I have a really good shot. This is my patience. This is patience right here. Okay, we have a good shot on, on the Vladivostok over there. And the Vladivostok has got a squishy broadside. It's, it's a Russian battleship. Citadel sit higher up, and we just hit the Citadel. So you're going to Citadel those Russian battleships no problem when they give you a broadside. And so we really hurt the Vladivostok there. The Vladivostok is firing HE. Now we're going to throw another probably doesn't realize that we reload so fast so we're going to really hammer them here we should be able to get another oh, we didn't get a citadel but we certainly got two penetrations so we took a lot of hull points off that Vladivostok with our Bismarck 380s here and like I mentioned we've just been firing only AP this round and the Bismarck's having a pretty good outing here even though I'm using open water but I, I did have a lot of blue allies screening my ship, so I didn't mind being in open water. But now, it's, uh, it can be tough. Like, I'm showing my broadside to that Vladivostok, but we just destroyed that Vladivostok in that volley. It was to show you the, um, the high risk, high reward of those Russian battleships. And that was the risk. He had his broadside, broadside showing. And the Bismarck just devastated that broadside with two citadels. Now we're going up against the Vanguard. And like I mentioned, that British uh, battleship, um, like the Bismarck, you, you were hoping for a better ship. And they've improved the Vanguard a lot since um, the opening. But then again, the, uh, the match ended there. And the Bismarck still had a really good outing there. And it goes to show you that this ship is a good ship. 307,000 credits. 146,000 in damage. Three sinking, sinkings, five citadels, a bunch of other stuff. It was a good match for the Bismarck. Now, guys, if you enjoyed this, uh, this quick guide to the Bismarck, please give me a like. And, of course, it would be wonderful if you would subscribe for future videos on my channel. Other than that, this is Spotted Gecko Gamer. Thank you for watching. Till next time. Today's time is 57 degrees. Today's war time is covered with the latest